Hi, this is Linda Amon, Amon Arts. Welcome to my world. And today I'm doing a little um, demo that would be something that would be fun for you to do as a gift for people or to do so for yourself. It's going to be called Create Bookmarks for Blessings. So uh, we're in a time right now that COVID-19 is keeping us um, kind of from getting to see all of our friends and neighbors. So I thought this would be something that you could do real quick, and I will show you how to create some bookmarks, and maybe you could send them in the mail, or you could put them on a, um, a doorknob of a neighbor. So I am um, knowing, knowing that an envelope is nine and a half inches by four and an eighth inch for a business size envelope. I'm going to be making my bookmark seven and a half inches by the width of the ruler, which is about an inch and a quarter. So I'll show you how I'm going to set those up first. I've done a few on a page here already, but I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So I am going to take the ruler and lay it down. And I am going to go from just the width of the ruler itself, spacing between the bookmarks I want to create. And I'm going to come down seven and a half inches on both sides. And then to make sure it's squared off nicely on the bottom, I just flip the ruler, go back the seven and a half inches the other direction, and just draw the line across. And that gives me a nice ruler size. So you can see I've got it a couple of them on the page here ready to go, spacing them so that I can do some things outside of the line. I will let you know that I'm going to be doing some kind of freehand ones. I would generally use a pencil and an eraser to have you get started, but for the video's sake and to make the video a little bit shorter for your art challenge, I'm just going to go straight with pen. So a little more daring, but I'm going to go straight with pen. And what I'm going to do is take an image from a book, and it will be copyright free because I'm just taking a small image as an inspiration and not as a copy. And I took a piece of paper and I cut it in to make a little frame. So you can see I made a little mat. And then I'm taking the extra piece off. So I'm going to lay that over a book here and show you what I'm going to be drawing from. So here's the image. It's got a little bit of shine on it today. And then I'm going to take these two, this one piece of paper that I've cut up, put it into the shape of my bookmark, cover the other part off, and that gives me an idea to start from. Let's see if I can lift it up for you. So I'm going to set that aside. You may not be able to see all of it at the same time. I'm videoing by myself here today. But I think I can do it side by side like that, so you can kind of see it. All right, so I'm going to start pen first. And I'm not going to worry about it being exacting. I'm going to have it be an inspiring of or an impression of. And I'm just going to do some florals on here. So there we go. So I'm going to not use pencil and eraser. You could if you wanted to. I'm also going to fall outside of the lines of the bookmark, and you'll see why here soon. So I'm going to do things as a shape. So I'm working that shape of the center of the flower, and I'm just going to wiggle some things in. I'm not going to cons be concerned that it's exacting. I'm just doing the shape. And if I do it the way that I like to do it, you can see some of my other videos, I make sure that I'm not talking about it being a flower. I'm just talking about it being its shape. So I'm going to wiggle things around and enjoy that. There's a little pokey thing here. And if we were going to talk about what the pokey thing is, it would be a leaf, but we're not going to say that. <laughs> and then here's another wiggly thing and some pointy things on it. So put some pointy things out. And just kind of enjoy the, the sketching of things. Don't worry too much about exacting this. These are what I would call disposable art, meaning that if someone enjoys them for a moment and they don't keep them, that's just fine. Although I find that when I give these away, people do love them and they are very engaged in keeping them and using them as a bookmark or, or whatever I've given the information for and as a gift. So we're just going to come out a little bit like that and we're going to do another one down here. So you can see I'm just using the reference 
just as that, as a reference. And then I'm going to do some wiggly things down here because none of you out there stopped me. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for this little bit. I'm going to come back in and give a few defining marks. And they're going to be loose and juicy. And that will be kind of fun. I have found, uh, I don't have very many of these bookmarks for samples. I've just got about two here because I've made quite a few and given quite a few away. And then I decided to do this this little presentation for you. So I don't I don't have a lot of of these available to show you, but that's okay. All right. So you can see I've come back and defined a few of the imagery there. Okay. That's what I'm going to do at this point. Okay, so now we're ready to paint. Um, the pen is dry, so I'm going to erase some of the pencil lines that kind of hang over the side in the floral areas. But I want to be sure it was dry first. And then while that is drying, I'm going to just draw a couple hearts to start another of these bookmarks, and it would be dry while I'm working on the one that we're painting. And the hearts are pretty easy to do, and they're kind of fun. I think one, two, three, four, let's do a little baby one down here. Okay, and then um, we can let that one be drying while I work here. So I'm using M. Graham watercolors. They're a very wonderful watercolor. I've already got some of the colors pulled out of the tray ready to go into the, into the palette area so that I can save a little bit of time for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of color to the centers here and I'm going to let that kind of happen. Because we are not letting things dry between as much, I will pop around. I might even go over to the second bookmark if I need to. But I'm just going to lay in some colors. These are where the little foliage pieces are. So if I come in and do a, a double layer of you know two colors there, it makes it more interesting than when it, if it's just one. And one of the things that my um, artists know that take classes from me is I quite often, uh, most often, will put the color down on the page rather than mixing it into the palette. So you'll see the nice oozing of colors in here as we do a loose look. I'm going to come back, rinse out really well each time, and get a nice brighter yellow there as I let that come through. And we'll put a little bit down here because we can. Okay, we can put a little bit there. Now while that's drying for just a minute, I'm going to take off just a little bit of that so that the peek through of the leaf um, pen shows through. So while that's drying for just a few moments so that I don't make everything run into each other, I'm going to come back over and start the, the hearts. So you can see that I've got a nice start of a color. Before I put the paint down, I am going to come and erase wherever the lines came through the hearts. I'm going to erase that because once you put pencil down and you put water or paint over that line, it's a little harder to erase that line late, later. I don't want to take the other lines out because that's going to be where I'm going to be cutting them out later. So that'll work. All right, so what I'm going to do is, while that's drying there for a minute, I'm going to take some of my luscious red and just kind of start one of these hearts. But I like multicolor, so I'm going to take a little bit of purple and let that run into it a little bit. Rinse out again and take just a little blue to the bottom. So where some of that will mix will be more of a purpley tone. Let's see if I can bring it up here for you a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So it gives a mix. Then I've got some mixed on my brush, of course, from doing that. So I can take some of that mixed color and come in with um, the beautiful quinacridone violet. Come in and get that. Let's rock and roll it a little bit so you can get some look. And take a little blue to the bottom on that one. And let's See, wherever paint, wherever you don't put water, the paint won't go. So I'm going to encourage it to go there. I'm going to rock it around a little bit. You can start seeing the colors. And then I'm going to take red down here. Maybe 
I'll have them red with just a tiny bit of a little bit of a color in the corner. These are all just fun things to play with because um, when you give these away, people will just love that you were thinking of them. And they are not going to be as particular as you might be. And they're just fun to do them. And you could do a lot of these in a short time. That one I'm going to leave kind of like that. I like the little skips in that one. And then let's let this one be a little bit neutralized by the paint that was already on my brush. Okay, so those can dry for a minute. I kind of like the little skips that we had happen in there. And then I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to load it up with a little paint. I'm going to cover this other, other one for just a moment so I don't splash on it. And I'm just going to do some sprinkles and let them kind of meld in a little bit so it would be a little more exciting. So I did a little bit of naphthol red and I could do just a little bit, let's do a little bit of the yellow, that'll be interesting. It'll do neutralized in a couple little hearts, but that's okay. Okay, and if I do just a little bit of water, some of those will splatter out a little bit more. And I didn't hurt my one next door, which was good. All right, so now this one's just dry enough that now I can come back and I can work on the floral here. So I'm going to just come in and go to the outside edges yeah, because I want to put a little different color to the inside. I want them to be wet so that they will blend in a little bit. So there's my outside. I want the inside to be a little darker. So I might as well use some of that same color I've already got on my palette. And there's a little bit of it running to the center. I'm okay with that. And then let's do this one with the blue to the outside. And then we're just gonna wiggle around a little bit. And it's a small space, so there's nothing really going in quickly with the uh, color. It's not drying fast or anything. It's a little cold in the room I'm working in today too. So then we put some quinacridone violet in there. And now we've got a little bit of a pop of the difference between those two. And then let's just take a little bit of the yellow down there and let that drag in. And then my, my little one there, I think we'll have it be, what should we do? Purple and blue. Let's, let's do a little bit of an orange one in there so it kind of pops the color. And we'll just kind of put that in there because we can. Kind of an orangish. That will pop the opposite of our blue. We'll have some orange with a little bit of red in there. Okay, so we'll let that dry. Um, I think that's looking pretty fun. You could take lots of time with these or just do them quickly. If you're doing a lot of them for neighbors and things, just enjoy the process and, you know, make some in volumes. Okay, so I'm just going to show that to you. And that what I will do is we will let that dry, and then I'll show you how we cut them out and the next presentation we would do. So you can see that I took some time to cut these out and went around them with all the shapes so that the next thing we can do is you can leave them like this and punch a hole in them and put a ribbon on them and just have them like this. The next thing I'm going to show you is if you don't have a laminator, uh, which a lot of you wouldn't have, I happen to have one, you can use wide tape or you could use contact paper so that when you seal them, they come a little bit brighter, they're a little bit more durable. And the other thing is uh, during this um, COVID-19, it might be something that you want to be able to um, have them wipe down with a little bit of sanitizer or something when they received them on their doorstep or in the mail. But I just wanted to show you that they're all cut out now and ready for uh, the next step. So I have some packaging tape here, a brand new roll, and if you just take and pull it, and you're pretty steady, and you're just on a table that you can pull this back off of, if you've made your bookmark pretty much the size I talked about, you can come down, lay it on it, and then the easiest way I find is to cut it 
and do it again. So lay it the other way. You could put a nice little message on the back before you seal your watercolor, your whole thing. And there we go. Get it pretty straight. Contact paper also works. It gives you a little bit more room. A laminator is perfect, but we don't all have that. And then you'll end up cutting the whole thing again because you need to cut on the outside edges. So I just take and really seal it down well. And if you didn't quite hit it right, you know, it doesn't hurt if you have to uh, do another piece of tape over and make it wider or something. And there might be a seam on it somewhere, but you'll get used to it. All right, and then always leave a little bit of a gap between the artwork and your tape. If you go right exactly to it, then what's going to happen is it's going to fall apart because it needs that outside edge to be taped. So go a little beyond leaving a little bit of space to the outside. But they seal, they, it brightens everything up if you have the tape on it or the laminate on it. And it's a little more protected and they're more durable. Okay, I'm going to get the bottom of it a little straighter. Okay, so you probably can't, well yeah, you can see that it's all shiny. So it made it a lot prettier. So I'm going to do the other one. I went a little farther out on the hearts on this one. So I might have to get a little, I, there is tape that you can buy that's wider, by the way. I've got really wide stuff, but you can just measure your bookmark to be sure that it's going to be the size that you want it to be. The width that you want. Okay, smooth it down straight. Cut it off. Then take your time trimming it out. Then when, well, let, I'll do that off camera, but basically you can see, look how bright and pretty those look. Then you can decide if you want to punch a hole with a hole punch. And then you can take some string or some ribbon. You can do beads. You can do all kinds of things. I'm just going to take some of this cording and double it over so that it's got quite a few strings to it. Run it through the hole. Like I said, you certainly can put beads and everything else on here too. Grab the other side, come through, and I can fray it or do whatever I want with it, but basically then you've got a little tie on it and you can make a loop, whatever you want. It makes it nice if you do something like this because then you can tie it onto a doorknob if you're leaving it with a friend. So that's on um, the way I would do this. I would show you the two that I have here. This one is the one I showed you early on. It's still one of my favorites. It's just real, real fun, similar to the one that we did today. This is my all-time favorite. I just, I had fresh flowers. Um, I wasn't able to get any fresh flowers today, or I would do that, but fresh flowers just inspired me to do this very soft spring look. So this is one that nobody gets but me. It's my little, for when I'm reading, I put it in my book to be able to use. So I hope that that gives you some inspiration. It's certainly going to be fun to give these away. Uh, blessings, create bookmarks for blessings here for us. So there you go. Thank you. Enjoy. Linda Amon, Amon Arts, thank you for coming into my world.